Welcome back. If you're following along with the series, playlist in the cards now, we've just cleared the quest, The Creeping Venom, to hunt a Giganox. Today, we'll be hunting a Nibble Snarf. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's his name. I'll mention here that there's a hot spring quest called Beneath the Burning Sand that has you hunt a Nibble Snarf to unlock the final permanent plus 25 stamina upgrade to the hot spring. Unfortunately, this will only unlock much later on, at the end of the village quests actually, but it's good to keep in mind. We're about halfway through the village quests now, believe it or not. Nibble Snarf can be a tricky monster, and I've seen people say they dislike this fight, which is pretty fair. The main thing we're going to focus on is making him swallow bombs, and hitting him on the nose when he's enraged. Both of these things can help us put him into a fishable state, where we can fish him out of the sand and get a clear opening to his stomach, which is his highest hit zone besides his uvula. Other things worth mentioning here are, his gills can be broken, and are easiest to hit when he's exhausted as they'll be out at all times. Even better if he's eating, since he'll more or less be stationary. His legs can also be broken, and hitting them enough will cause him to topple over, revealing his uvula. Though depending on your weapon, it may be pretty hard to break as the opening is really short. It's also worth noting that pitfall traps, flash bombs, and meat bait won't work on him. What will work are sonic bombs, or small barrel bombs. When he's under the sand, they'll make him come up where it lands if you're quick enough. Though sometimes he'll do an attack faster than normal and won't give you enough time.
となるもの As you just saw, I bought a large barrel bomb from the store. In in game, in game. This is because using bombs on Nibble Snarf requires one for the first time, but two for the second. And we're given two bombs in the blue bot. If this is your first time hunting Nibble Snarf, go to area 10 and a cutscene will play. Otherwise, go to area 9. Nibble Snarf will start hidden in one of these sand piles. You can find out which one by looking for his breath. Sometimes you'll see question marks or exclamation marks as well if he notices you. You can either get a hit in or throw a paintball to get the fight started. It'll open up with the jaws bite, so don't stand too close. You can try and hit a front leg on his way down if you want to break them later on. Whenever you're around him, anticipate and imagine what he can hit you with and how you will avoid it. If I'm to his side, I'm always thinking, where do I need to be to avoid a turning bite right now? Before engaging, always make sure it's safe to do so. Oftentimes I'll stand still, ready to avoid an attack he would do towards me where I am. Greatsword is a high commitment weapon. I chose it specifically to show you that you need to learn when it's right to commit to a charge attack and when you need to just do unsheath attacks. If you're unaware, Greatsword is actually a really high mobility weapon, specifically because it's sheathed most of the time. I had my barrel bomb selected in preparation for the next time he burrowed. I put it down and I throw a sonic bomb at it to get him to swallow. This is one way to get him to swallow a bomb. The other main way is during his triple charge. After a short delay, the bomb explodes. Remember, where you start fishing doesn't matter, so use nipple to shield yourself from those damn delics so they don't interrupt your fishing time. Fish fear me. Men turn their eyes. I am alone on this barren earth. If you missed it, I found that works pretty well. An unsheath attack into a strong shard slash, then I roll and reposition, do a kick, then a level 1 strong shard slash. I saw an opening to hit a Delic so I took it, so me taking this shiny now is a bit risky. Sometimes I stand still because it's funny. Noble Snarf is now enraged. He's faster and does more damage. His nose is also a better hit zone and my new target. Sometimes he'll swim around like this. Just be patient and look for an opening. I've got my bomb selected because I'm looking for another opening to use them. I baited out the turning bite, then punished and ran away before you could retaliate. Do that. Here's my opening. Remember I already used a bomb on Noble Snarf, so now I'll need to use two. Fortunately, he can eat multiple in one go. I hesitated just then because I wasn't sure if he'd do a sand beam instead. If he does, it'll blow up the bombs. I swear he'll do it on purpose if you put down bombs early. Here I'm again using Nibble to shield myself from possible Delix interruptions. Is Delix interruptions a good band name? Oh jeez, mistakes were made. I have made a mistake. I decided to move to area 7 so I can drink a potion in peace. Then I figured, maybe he's going to area 10, so I head there. 
He went to area eight. This is subtle but important. I knew he left that area to come eat a Renoplus here. This animation is the end of him killing it. So I set up my positioning to punish this big open. I stand still to bait his beam in the direction I want. When he starts to turn, I position to hit his arm. Lucky Stagger. He would have gotten me with his back blast. He's enraged now. I'll focus on his nose more. I just broke his right arm while he was in the middle of an animation. Ugh. He should have been toppled from that, but being in a transition animation prevents it, so I lost the topple. It's a really dumb way the games work. Fortunately, he can be fished now, so it all works. Here's the combo again. Don't know if it's super optimal, but it's flashy. He's exhausted. But not defenseless. That's an opening. He's eating again. There's his gills. I'm keeping an eye on this Rena Plus so he doesn't run my ass over. In this area, if you have time, you might want to kill the Rena Plus. It's their fault for getting involved, to be honest. And there's the second leg broken with no topple. What a good game. Nah, but for real it sucks. Nibble is limping now and heading to his nest to sleep. Right after he disappears, you can count to 10 or something and he should be asleep by that time. I'm not sure how long it takes to be honest, but 8 or 10 seconds should work.
You need to focus on baiting attacks and being patient for this fight. You really can't get greedy. If you're having trouble, be patient with yourself. Try and find out what you're being hit by the most and work towards that. Or just pick any move you hate and figure out how to avoid it. Stick with it. You've got this. To craft either of Nibble Snarf's armor sets, this is what you'll need. When carving Nibble Snarf, you can get Nibble Snarf Shell, Nibble Snarf Hide, Nibble Snarf Scalp, and Vivid Fluid. When breaking his gills, you can receive Nibble Snarf Shell, Nibble Snarf Scalp, or Vivid Fluid. When breaking his claws, you can receive Nibble Snarf Claw, or Nibble Snarf Hide. When picking up a shiny, you can get Wyvern Tears, or Vivid Fluid. When capturing Nibble Snarf, you can receive Nibble Snarf Hide, Vivid Fluid, Nibble Snarf Claw, and Nibble Snarf Scalp. You can get Monster Bone M's from Brenna Plus or Uroctor, and you can get Monster Bone L's from monsters like Barra. The Altaroth jaws and stomachs come from Altaroth. Remember to bring poison smoke bombs so they don't explode. You don't have to wait for them to eat something first, as we're not getting the shinies from them. You could go to the Sandy Plains for them, as you can find them in Areas 4 and 8, but you can also go to Misty Peaks Area 9 or Flooded Forest Area 9 if you prefer. By default, the Blade Master Armor will give you Speed Eating plus 2, Gourmand, and the negative skill, Raise Hunger. Using the cap instead of the helm will remove the negative skill if that's all you want, but isn't necessary as we can get more or less the full potential out of this set while still using the helmet. Using two orange metabolism jewels, one white, hungerless jewel, and one teal stream jewel, we can get speed eating plus two, scavenger, and water attack plus one. I can see this armor set being a favorite actually because of speed eating. It's a pretty nice quality of life skill. It'll make all consumable items animations faster, making using items much safer. If you find yourself having trouble finding openings to heal, or even just want to be more aggressive with your item usage, you should give this armor a try, seriously. Gluttony will increase the stamina gain from using stamina items. Unfortunately, this isn't really that good of a skill, especially right now. One, we can always bring well done stakes if we really need to. And two, we never really want to let our stamina get that low to take advantage of the skill anyways. Our hunts really aren't going to take that long either, so... While it's a nice bonus, it's basically a dead skill. Though, along with speed eating, it makes the start of our hunts wicked fast. It really doesn't do that much though. Water attack is, of course, a good skill for using water element weapons, but depending on what you're using, the Ludroth set might be better. What this armor does have that the Ludroth one doesn't, of course, is the speed eating skill and 30 more fire resistance, since the Ludroth set has negative 20 and Nibble Snarf has 10. That honestly might be a good enough reason to use this, unless you're using something like dual blades or hammer or something, but even then, you can always use power juice for unlimited stamina anyways. All in all, while speed eating is honestly pretty good, you can ignore this armor set if it doesn't appeal to you. I think it looks pretty unique too, like some futuristic soldier or something. Like the Blade Master armor, by default the gunner armor will give you Speed Eating plus 2, Gourmand, and the negative skill Raise Hunger. Using the helmet instead of the cap will lower Speed Eating to plus 1 and give us Water Attack instead, still keeping the Gourmand and Raise Hunger armor skills. Using the cap and the same decorations as the Blade Master armor will get the same skills. And the reason to use this set is the same here as it is there. Speed eating plus 2 is the main draw of this set, in my opinion, with Gourmand and Water Attack plus 1 being nice bonuses. That's all I have to say about this quest. This monster's tricky, and things can easily get out of hand if you're not careful. Try and learn his moves, and most of all, be patient. Rushing into attack without thinking will just get you killed. Keep it up. You've got this. Until next time.